Okay, well, it's different, but... Uh, <clears throat> Right, so link analysis to life science linked data. Uh, so first of all, thank you again for uh, inviting me to, uh, to another biohackathon. I'm very happy to be here. Looking forward to working with all of you uh, during the course of the week. What I'm presenting here is some work that we've done uh, that has been accepted for ISWC, which will be presented uh, next month. So the principal issue here is that Linked data for us, I think, is a, is a rich resource. Um, we envision many applications for this, but fundamental to our use of this information is its quality. And in this sense, what I'm talking about is whether or not the links between the entities are accurate. And um, can we also use this to identify errors uh, in, in the data that we have? So network analysis is one of these sort of key um, tools uh, and approaches that we can use to examine our network of data. Uh, and it has been used, um, oh, you have no pictures, oh my god. <laughs> um, hmm. Okay, let's see if I can show you the pictures. <laughs> I think that's important. All right, there's the pictures. <laughs> There you go. Okay, I'm going to do it this way. Right, so, um, so in many networks, one of the key features is that they, uh, they typically follow um, this. They typically follow uh, a power law uh, distribution, where you basically see a lot of nodes with very few connections and a few nodes with large numbers of connections. And these are typically called hubs. Um, sometimes they're called party hubs because they bring everybody together to do something interesting. And the, the, the web itself has been characterized as uh, having this sort of characteristic, and more importantly, that uh, it has something called the small world phenomenon, so that you have um, a clustering coefficient, which is significantly higher than what you would expect from random, and also that the graph has a shorter uh, average uh, distance. So the clustering coefficient uh, for a node in, the, in a weakly connected component quantifies how close its neighbors are uh, in the clique, and the average distance then is the average shortest path length between all nodes in the graph. Right, so what, what did we set out to do? We set out to sort of examine linked data from three perspectives. The first is the links amongst the data sets. Uh, to also look at uh, the uh, links between the entities themselves within those data sets, and to look at what we call term, uh, the terms that are used or the vocabularies that are used to describe those entities. So our base data set is BioTRDF. So this is a project that um, I run, uh, which attempts to take data that is often available in a myriad of different kinds of non-compatible formats and turns it into glorious RDF. And more importantly, what we try to do is we try to uh, fix the data so that references between the different data sets finally connect together as they should. So in the release that we did last year, uh, we have 35 data sets, um, <laughs> over five of these come from outside sources, and 11 billion RDF triples, a billion entities, 2,000 classes, and 4,000 properties. And so the, the network is quite diverse. It contains everything from proteins to genes to diseases, uh, pathways, interactions, and so on. So the stuff that makes up most of the life sciences uh, of interest. So this is a network diagram that shows you the connectivity between some of the data sets that we have in the network. Um, and indeed, uh, the network itself is well linked, uh, minus the data sets that we obtain from the EBI. And uh, it has components of, of hubs, uh, so basically uh, uh, data sets that link many other data sets and that they are also authoritative. So for instance, PubMed typically doesn't link out to anything else, but everybody links to PubMed. Yeah. So it has this small world uh, characteristic where you have an average distance of 2.7, clustering coefficient of 0.22, and effectively that shows that it's fairly resilient. So you can take out nodes in this graph, and likely you can still recapitulate uh, most of the structure of the network. Uh, and as well find alternative paths between the different nodes in the graph. Right, so we can look at the graph itself, uh, or the entities themselves, and what we wanted to do is sort of look at how well do entities link to each other. 
And what we found is that um, most of the entries that we have link to other databases. Um, and in BioTrdF, we capture that through this so-called X relation. And so we basically don't know, in many cases, it's a database cross-reference. And so you would have a link, say, between drug bank and keg, or a drug bank and kebi, and you would sort of ask the question, well, is it meant to be equivalent, or is it just a pointer to something that's related, or is there something even totally different in terms of its relationship? So we typically don't know from the data file, and its usage can be quite varied, so we make no commitment as to what it actually means. But these X relations nevertheless show you the pointers between the different data sets. So these are, have underspecified semantics, um, and we can sort of characterize uh, how well, how many links are coming into these nodes and how many links go out uh, from these nodes, and that's the diagrams that you see here. And what we see actually is that uh, for many of the t different types of data that we have in the network, they don't follow power law distribution. And part of the reason is because the exponent is too large. So that first portion is, uh, doesn't follow at all sort of this um, uh, uh, arrangement. And moreover, you have this very steep um, uh, uh, component where you have a lot of nodes that have very few edges, and then it dramatically goes to a few nodes with lots of edges. And so this graph is actually quite different from what we saw from an analysis of the billion triple challenge in 2010, where there was basically this characteristic of small world phenomena and following the power law distribution. So another option or opportunity that we have is to examine how well do the links in the network lead to corresponding links. So in that sense, we, we let's see, do I have a picture? Oh yeah. So for instance, here you can see that um, in the left-hand pane, we look at the linkages between drug bank, farm GKB, and keg. And so each of these databases makes links to other databases. And so we ask the question, do they link up, when you close the circle, when you close the transitive closure, do they link up to the same things? And so in many cases they do, but not always. Uh, so in the case here, we have, so 7,600 entries, drug entries in drug bank, 3,100 in farm GKB and 10,000 in keg. And you can see the edges sort of indicate how many relations go between these different databases. So between drug bank and keg, we have 1,289. Between drug bank and farm GKB, we have 1,600. And then there's 962 between farm GKB and keg. So the network is not complete. And so while we have 1,200 here between drug bank and keg, we have at most 962 going through the closure that's offered by farm GKB. So the question is now, for the 1600 and the 962 that you result, do they point to the same things uh, between drug bank and keg do? And so what we found was that uh, in most cases they do, so 946 have identical endings, but six have different end endings. So they point to different things when you close the transitive loop. We have some that are missing, and then we have others that we obtained through the transitive closure that we didn't have from direct links. So this is kind of interesting. It sort of shows us that maybe we can use other data sets to fill in the gaps and examine whether or not the connections that people are making still hold. <clears throat> right, so one way to, um, one way to evaluate uh, sort of the methods by which we might use these kinds of networks is to uh, establish gold standards. And so in this sense, we use the cases where we see reciprocal links in the data set where we see, for instance, drug making a pointer or drug bank making a pointer to keg and vice versa as being a bona fide link that's verified by both uh, parties. Um, there are many methods by which we can try to identify potential uh, in, uh, entity links. And typically what people do is they look at the labels and they try to use the labels as the basis by which to say, if these labels match, then these entities probably should be identical. But this only gets you so far doesn't get you all of it. And so you have to incorporate typically more sophisticated methods that look, for instance, at the semantic context and other aspects in order to get better links. So what we did was we looked at our ability to re, uh, uh, discover the reciprocal links using the uh, lexical analysis approach plus a text mining approach where we look at a set of properties. So not just the lexical match, but other properties that are associated with the entity to see whether we can find them and classify them. 
So it turns out that by doing that, we get much better uh, results uh, using uh, uh, machine learning than we would otherwise just by simple lexical matching. <coughs> Right. <laughs> so um, the last bit that we did was kind of look and see can, uh, how well um, do the terms that are used to describe these entities match across the different data sets. And so in that sense, we use ontology matching techniques to say, well, the type, for instance, the gene type that we see in PharmJKB, is that, is that uh, matching then the um, gene type in NCBI gene? And so we have a variety of different, again, lexical variants from this, and we're, so we're trying to just see how well do they correspond to one another. So we generated lots of mappings uh, using a tool called Falcon AO, which uses linguistic matching, uh, structural matching, and uh, a pool of synonyms to find uh, equivalences and create mappings between the properties of the classes uh, and the uh, data type properties. And so what we find is um, that most of the data is about only a few different things in the network, typically. So the top ones are gene, drug, enzyme, pathways. Uh, and, and, then, uh, uh, and then there's a few others that, that we see from there. So there's significant overlap in the topic, and uh, these, this distribution does not follow the power laws we saw in, uh, in other uh, semantic web uh, data analyses. Right, so then we compared these different, these three different networks to see how similar they were. And what we find is that the entity link graph and the term link graph match pretty well with the uh, data set link graph, but the entity graph and the term link graph don't match up very well. And that pretty much uh, tells us that the number of linked entities contributes little to the overlap uh, of vocabularies. All right, so just to summarize our findings, uh, we looked at these three different kinds of graphs uh, in linked data, uh, the ent data set, entity, and term. Uh, and that they don't share the same characteristics. But they do tell us something about the quality of the information that we have access to and our ability to find uh, errors and to complete the, the network of graphs, uh, the network of links. Um, right. Yeah, so another portion is that because some data sets have very few um, uh, links, then we're unable to do very much with it, meaning we can't find many more links because there are so few to begin with. So there are some challenges, I think, and this should be probably be pushed back to original data providers, is to try to create more linkages that are uh, validated within their own shop as to uh, their correspondence. And of course, when people create new databases, they should try to hit even the, the larger databases by which cover most of the things that they're already looking at. Okay, so um, I wanted to share with you these results, which I thought was pretty interesting and was done in collaboration uh, with um, two researchers, one of which was housed in, in my group at Stanford for a year. Um, and so for now, what I'm looking forward to this week is a few different things. Uh, one is, I think, based on sort of these results, and I think our desire to make the life science semantic web quite successful is that we... Don't, we're not where we need to be. And I think we should have an honest discussion as to what, what, what do we need to do to make this really a functional network so that we can go from one resource to another with the links that ought to be there um, and to make our, our a really you know, a valuable resource for other researchers to use. Um, as well as my project, this BioTradeF project, needs lots of love. Uh, and so one of the things that we're trying to do uh, that we started doing is to have Docker deployments for BioTradeF. And that seems quite promising. Uh, it means a lot easier, uh, much less <laughs> much less work uh, to, to, to get this thing up and functional. So we're hoping to package it all up. And then finally to work with uh, Tudor uh, and, and other, uh, and Jindong and others about text mining and curation. Okay, thanks.